Welcome to our worship this morning. My name is Lynn Clayton. I'm one of the church wardens here at St Helens and St Barnabas churches in Orr Hastings. Today we focus on Jesus, the true vine, following on from the Good Shepherd and the way, the truth and life. This last I am saying recorded in John's Gospel reflects the theme of mission in all its many facets. Before we explore this though, we begin with a worship song which speaks of the security we have in Jesus. Faithful one, so unchanging, ageless one, you're my rock of peace. Again and again 
The vine was one of the most powerful symbols the Jews had. A large vine adorned the front of the temple, perhaps inspired by words in Psalm 80. You bought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it, and it took root and filled the land. There was so much promise in those early days, but then things began to go wrong. Then as now, as we listen to these next words from the psalm, let's think of our own part in what has gone wrong and turn again to the Lord and seek his forgiveness and promise of new life. Why have you broken down its walls so that all who pass by pick its grapes? Return to us, O God Almighty. Look down from heaven and see. Watch over this vine, the roots your right hand has planted, the people you have raised up for yourself. Your vine is cut down, it is burned with fire. Let your hand rest on those at your right hand, those whom you have raised up for yourself. Then we will not turn away from you. Revive us and we will call on your name. Restore us. Make your face shine upon us, that we may be saved. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our next worship song is really a prayer based on the vine. You are the vine, we are the branches. Keep us abiding in you.
Our reading this morning is from John chapter 15 and is read by Thelma Jones. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you, so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Penny Avan is going to share her thoughts with us about the reading. Good early memories can be important to us as they can often inform and help us to make sense of our lives later on. One of mine is of family visits to Hampton Court. There were two highlights on those visits. One was how quickly we could conquer the maze. The other was a visit to the glass house to see the progress of the grapevine. Now, the grapevine is easily the largest in the world and was planted way back in... 1768 by Lancelot Capability Brown. It was taken from a cutting grown in Essex. Jesus uses the analogy of the vine for the seventh and the last of his I am sayings. The setting is the journey from the upper room to Gethsemane. The audience, just the eleven disciples, as Judas had already left. Time was short, so what did Jesus most want his disciples to learn? What was on his heart in these last minutes of teaching? The vine gives us a powerful visual aid. First, it has to be planted. And Jesus makes it clear that it is the Father who is the gardener. He is the one who tends and cares for the plant. At times like this, we need to hold on to the truth that in spite of the challenges of our time, our Father is in control. He is Lord, and there is nothing outside his power. As any gardener will tell you, tending plants and enabling them to grow strongly and be fruitful takes a great deal of work. Grapevines are no exception. Visit the Hampton Course Glasshouse in January and all you will see is a huge trunk 
and some very sparse, though still quite long, branches. It all looks pretty dead. But a month later, there are signs of life as tiny shoots begin to appear. But if those shoots are to develop into healthy spurs, they will need feeding. As the sap rises up the trunk, so life begins to flow again. Jesus said, No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. It has to be connected. The analogy is clear. We have to remain in Jesus. But what does that mean? How do we remain connected to him? As we've often thought, we do so by prayer, by our reading and study of the Bible, by being conscious of his presence with us throughout the day, and by worship and praise. As we settle into a new routine of doing these things on our own at home, we may need to be more active in carving out time to take in nourishment, the sap which will feed us. Now comes the painful part. An essential part of healthy growth is pruning. Jesus reminds his disciples, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. On a grapevine, this pruning happens when there is a lot of growth. To the untrained eye, it seems madness to take off healthy leaves and the later burgeoning bunches of grapes. But this is necessary to ensure that the sap, and in the case of the Hunton Court vine, the foliar feed, goes into producing really healthy bunches of grapes. God's pruning can take many different forms. Our current limitations may be part of that. And what's our response? It may be to bend anger at those who place the restrictions or to become negative and depressed. It could be to use the time to listen, to learn, to seek God in new ways and to prepare for a future which may well be very different from the life we were living a few months ago. Jesus knew that his disciples were to continue the work he had begun. They would face many challenges, failures and heartache before they were filled with the Spirit at Pentecost. It was to be a time of learning, forgiving, of living in the moment, a time of preparation before going out into all the world to make disciples. Maybe we are being called to learn and to prepare for a new way of being church after lockdown. The whole aim of growing a vine is not to produce a decorative plant, but a fruitful one. The whole thrust of what Jesus is saying about being fruitful, about producing fruit that would last. What is this fruit? Well, clearly it's to grow healthy disciples. And he gives us some clues about how we're to do this. Firstly, we are to pray in faith. Ask whatever you wish, then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Jesus wanted his disciples to be sure of this. As Roger reminded us last week, it's a promise which comes in the previous chapter, and it's repeated in the next chapter too. It's not a carte blanche for us to ask for whatever desire pops into our mind, but to seek what to pray for as we ask in my name. There's no time today to go into why some of our prayers are apparently not answered, but suffice it to say 
that we have this promise four times in these chapters, and so we must take it seriously. Secondly, we are to obey my commands. What commands was Jesus talking about? Well, the Ten Commandments are a good place to begin, especially when we see them in the light of Jesus' own interpretation of some of them in the Sermon on the Mount. God gave them to us to challenge our very thoughts and motives as well as our actions. They are the roots of a truly godly society. Thirdly, we're to love each other as I have loved you. This is perhaps the most well-known and yet the most challenging command. Paul writes to the Romans that love must be sincere. And he spells out to the Corinthians the nature of a love that is patient and kind, not self-seeking, keeps no record of wrongs. It always protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres. It is a costly love that is exemplified so much more powerfully in the selfless acts of care given hourly by NHS and care staff, by those serving in food banks or in debt counselling, or listening to those distressed by self-isolation, to name but a few examples. All of those are so much more powerful than the love portrayed in TV soaps and blockbusting dramas. Lives will be saved by love expressed, love shown in action as well as love spoken in word. May the vine that adorned the temple, or even now is bursting into life at Hampton Court, be reproduced in our lives as we remain firmly in Jesus, chosen and befriended by him, the true vine. May the Lord bless you as you remain in him. Amen. Let's listen again to that worship song, You Are the Vine. And now let's turn to prayer. Our prayers today are led by Thelma. Our prayers for today. At the end of each section, I will say, Jesus, the true vine. And the response is, keep us faithful to you. Let's pray. In our prayers today, 
we continue to ask in faith that Jesus will be Lord over all we face at this time. And we take hold of his promise, then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Lord Jesus, keep us faithful in our walk with you, especially as we are separated from one another. As we continue in lockdown, help us to use our time wisely in reading and prayer, in bringing encouragement to others, and most of all, in keeping our eyes on you. Jesus, the true vine, keep us faithful to you. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. We continue to pray for all those whose lives have been touched by the pandemic, for the sick and bereaved, for medical and support staff, for those suffering from loneliness, abuse and financial hardship. Jesus, the true vine, keep us faithful to you. For those in government who have the responsibility of making decisions which affect all our lives, and for teachers, business owners, farmers and community workers as they seek to safely implement new guidelines. Jesus, the true vine, keep us faithful to you. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. We pray for the many in this country and around the world as they seek to implement Jesus' command through compassion, healing, mission and care. Give vision and energy, wisdom and compassion that the many who are deprived, hurting and helpless may know something of the love which comes from experiencing sincere love. Jesus, the true vine, keep us faithful to you today and each day. Amen. The Collect for today, the sixth Sunday after Easter. Risen Christ, you have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and forever. Amen. And now, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final worship song speaks of Jesus' command to go out to live and speak of him. This reminds us of Jesus' final commission given to his disciples before he returned to heaven, an act we will be celebrating on Thursday, which is Ascension Day. Go forth and tell, O Church of God, awake, God's saving news to all the nation take.
we end with a blessing from the book of Jude. To him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us without blemish before the presence of his glory with rejoicing. To the only God, our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning, either online or listening in by Zoom. I hope you can join us next week. Keep safe.